okay boys uh, now today we are going to see the new uh, hydraulic circuit which is known as dual pump unloading circuit so in the previous uh, lecture we have seen the unloading circuit this unloading circuit but it was for single pump means we unloaded the one pump here we have to unload the two pumps so that is known as the dual pump hydraulic circuit now what is the speciality of this hydraulic circuit in this hydraulic circuit the two pumps are used this is pump number one which is low pressure high flow pump it means this is the pump pump number one which is having low pressure means this is giving low pressure but the discharge of this pump or the flow of this pump is very high so th this is high flow pump another one pump we are using in this circuit which is the pump number two which is high pressure low flow means number two pump is delivering the very high pressure and very low flow means there are the two pump low pressure high flow pump and second one is known as the high pressure low flow pump so these are the two pumps are used in this therefore it is known as the dual pump unloading circuit this circuit is also known as high high low flow pump so it means one uh, pump is having the high flow one pump is having the low flow so it is also known as high low flow pump circuit now before understanding this circuit i will show you one video so where this dual pump hydraulic circuit is used and unloading hydraulic circuit is used and what is the actual application of this hydraulic circuit now let us see that i will show you one video so this is the one video i want to show you that in this case what happens now suppose there is one operation is taking place you can see here so the punching operation is taking place it means that we are doing punching to this plate right so this is the punching operation is taking place so you can see here again you can see the punching operation is taking place now the punching operation the hole is punch here with the help of the hydraulic uh, punching machine now what happens what is the speciality of this uh, punching operation now you can observe that in this punching operation what happens uh, when the this die is fixed here this is upper part is known as the pump punch when punch is fixed and the die is fixed now what happens in this hydraulic circuit there is a one speciality that uh, whatever the travel of the punch is there so the punch will travel from some distance right so from top to bottom it will travel and it will travel without any resistance unless and until it touches the workpiece so when the punch will touch the workpiece so suppose let us assume that the motion of the pump started from here right for example the motion of the pump started from here right and from here the punch is coming here and here the punch is touching to the workpiece now up to this moment the there is a no work is being done it is only the motion it is only the what you can say the displacement of the pump punch is taking place up till it touches to the workpiece so this motion or the this movement of the punch should be fast because uh, we are not doing any work so only the motion of the punch is taking place so this motion of the punch should be fast so that the cycle time of the operation will be less right you understand cycle time means what whatever the time required for completing one operation that will be less right so from this to this up till touching to the workpiece the motion should be uh, what you can say the faster because we don't have to apply a uh, large amount of the pressure but when the punch will touch to the workpiece right so at that moment the punching operation has to be start means what whatever the metal piece is placed there i want to punch that metal piece and for that punching operation 
I required very large amount of the pressure. Why pressure is required? Because you know that uh, pressure is equal to what force into uh, area. So I required large amount of the force to shear that metallic plate to punch that metallic plate. And when I require large amount of the pressure, I require large large amount of the uh, force, right? So for that operation, you require very large amount of the force, right? And pressure, but for the only moment of the punch from here to here you don't require that much amount of the pressure because nothing work is done now you see this operation i will play the video now this person the he is uh, fixing the punch and here you can see the punch is coming downward here is the workpiece now punch is coming downward and now the punch has touched to the workpiece now the punch has work touched to the workpiece up till this moment uh, there should be the low pressure the operation can be done on the low pressure and it should be fast So for fast you have to give the more amount of the fuel uh, Hydraulic oil when I will supply the more hydraulic oil the motion will be faster right with less pressure But at this moment when the punch had touched to the workpiece now see what happens now actually the punching operation will take place now the punching operation will take place and for this punching operation you require very large amount of the what you can say the force uh, or the pressure so same thing is done in this case of the what you can say the dual pump hydraulic pump now what is done in case of the dual pump hydraulic pump so there are the two pumps one is the low pressure high discharge pump another being the high pressure uh, low discharge pump and this is the motor power pump number one this is motor power pump number two this is the pressure relief wall for pump number one and for pump number two this is pressure relief wall and there is a check wall so this is check wall two and this is check wall one so there are the two check wall check wall one for pump number one check wall two for pump number two and there is a four by three direction control wall and which type of this direction control wall is four by three solenoid operated direction control wall and there is an actuator now what will happen at this middle position you can see here the uh, oil from the pump is not going to the actuator and from actuator the oil is not coming to the any port so this is the what you can say the central position the operation is stop here now suppose i change the position of the solenoid coil and i make the connection number one so this is my first position suppose so in this first position what happens now I want to move the actuator or I want to extend the actuator from this position now suppose uh, this from this position to this position up till this right so here only this much amount of the motion is the ideal motion of the punch because no work done is taking place right so from here to here the motion should be very quick right the it should move very fast here to here the actuator and from here onwards suppose at this moment the punch here i will attach the pump here the punch will be attached so from here onwards the punch will start the punching operation so here i require large amount of the pressure right here i don't require large amount of the pressure only the discharge should be more so that the motion will be the faster now what happens in this first condition condition when i start both the pump so the flow from this pump will go to this line and through the check wall now this check wall will get open through the check wall the oil will come here from pump number two through the check wall this will also get open because you can see it is open from the check wall the oil will come and both the oils will go to the actuator through this line and actuator start moving up to this point now when the actuator has moved up to this point what will happen the pressure will be higher pressure will be increased now suppose uh, i set the pressure xyz so when this pressure will reach higher pressure will reach at that moment what will happen this is your uh, here you can see here 
this is your here you can see this is your I will mark here this is your unloading wall you see here so as the pressure will reach up to some amount so what will happen that pressure that pressure from this line will come here and this wall will get open unloading wall so unloading wall is connected to the pump number one which is having the low pressure and high flow from this now what happens we don't require high flow because the motion has taken uh, to a very fast rate now what happens when the pressure will reach up to certain moment at that moment this unloading valve will open and this unloading valve will open whatever the oil flow is coming from this pump that will be get discharges to the reservoir means what I unloaded this complete wall so from here the now the oil is not going the from this pump number one the oil is going to the reservoir but still this pump is working and from this pump the oil is going to the actuator from this moment as the oil will go to the actuator as this pump is which type of pump is this this is high pressure pump low discharge understand so this here onwards the pressure will be very higher and as the pressure will be very higher you can do the punching operation here now what is the use of this circuit the use of this circuit is that there is a tremendous power saving by using the unloading wall number second as we are using the both the pump one is <coughs> low pressure high discharge second is high pressure low discharge this operation will be faster therefore the cycle time will be very very less and there will be the power saving that whatever the amount of the motor power is required to run the pump there will be the power saving and this therefore it is known as the dual pump unloading circuit i hope you understand so when this unloading wall will come into the picture this unloading wall will come into the picture when the actuator will travel from this position to this sufficient amount of the pressure will be get built in add that pressure this unloading wall gets open and it fully unload the discharge of the pump number one to the reservoir and only the discharge from the pump number two will go to the actuator and it will increase the pressure and with that high pressure the punching operation or any operation where you require a large amount of the force that can be completed so this is known as the uh, dual pump unloading circuit uh, i i hope you understand the dual pump unloading circuit and now what happens in this case now you'll see that as uh, this valve is unloaded uh, from here the oil is going to the actuator but this oil will not travel back to the pump because here the check wall is so from pump number two whatever the oil is coming that it will not go to the return line because here check wall is product that will ultimately will go to the what we can say the actuator and the operation can be done so here the second position is shown so it is connected so in this second position the pump is connected to the this end which is known as the rod end of the actuator from here the oil will go and from here the oil will go to the uh, what you can say the reservoir so this is known as the dual pump unloading circuit generally it is used where the first uh, movement of the actuator is should be the fast and afterward uh, you require large amount of the pressure for performing the operation in that case what is done uh, for first fast movement of the actuator both the pump are uh, connected both the pump are uh, supplying oil to the um, actuator after that certain amount of the pressure is reached then the low pressure uh, uh, high discharge pump is um, uh, make unloaded so unloading valve comes into the picture and furthermore only the high pressure low discharge pump works and it performs the operation by creating the large amount of the uh, pressure okay so this was dual pump hydraulic circuit now 
after finishing dual pump hydraulic circuit only two hydraulic circuit we are to, we have to see now so what are there the actual applications of the hydraulic circuit now say uh, we have to see the hydraulic circuit first we will see hydraulic circuit for shaping machine now i hope in uh, theory of machine all of you have uh, studied the shaping machine now what is the function of shaping machine shaping machine is a machine which is used for the metal cutting operation now here also first i will show you uh, and in shaping machine you know that there is the cutting operation first the forward stroke will be the cutting stroke so in uh, in which the material is cut and the return stroke is the ideal stroke so uh, in the return stroke there is a no mat uh, metal cutting is taking place so uh, that stroke should be faster so we made one um, circuit in theory of machine which is known as which was known as the quick return motion mechanism i hope you remember uh, with words quick return motion mechanism and crank and slotted quick return motion mechanism in in case of the shaping machine so for what purpose that was used that was used for uh, the forward motion will be slow and the return motion will be uh, faster so i will show you one video of the shaping machine here uh let us see the video of the shipping machine here it will be so this is our shipping machine so you can see this video i will play this video once again you see this is our shipping machine right so here the workpiece will be fixed this is the ram here the single point cutting tool is attached and this is mechanical actually it is um, uh, mechanically operated so here the workpiece is fitted and you see how the operation of the shipping machine will take place so you see now the shipping machine will get started so this is cutting operation forward cutting and return is ideal so return should be faster forward only the reciprocating motion of the tool is taking place so same operation we have to perform by using the hydraulic circuit so forward will be somewhat slow and return will be somewhat what faster so quick return so that we have to make with the help of the uh, hydraulic circuit now let us see our shipping machine hydraulic circuit now you can see this is the hydraulic circuit diagram for shipping machine now what are the component so uh, these are the components you can see here this is the cutting tool is attached here right this is the ram uh, here and this is the ram so in between these there is a hydraulic cylinder is provided so this is the actuator right actuator is here and there are the two ports port number 1 and port number 2 generally we call a and b here the number is given 1 and 2 there are two stoppers are there these are the two stoppers are there all right and uh, this will be the forward stroke cutting stroke in this direction will be the cutting stroke it should be slow and in way this will be the return stroke that will that should be the faster and this is the lever operated so here is the stopper operated uh, 4 by 2 direction control wall is used so you can see here 4 by 2 direction control wall this is direction control wall afterward this is pump this is motor this is filter this is reservoir and this is prv only rv is written because it is prv pressure relief for and here is the pressure gauge is provided and what you can see here the suppose this we call it is known as the uh, a end so at the inlet there is a no what you can say the flow control wall is provided but at the outlet suppose this end we call it as an outlet these two ends can be called as this is this end can be called as a uh, rod end and this end can be called as the blank end so so generally we call it is outlet so at this outlet you can see which part is this do you remember yes this is flow control wall is provided and this flow control wall is with a integral check wall this part is integral check wall so here i can adjust the flow control wall and i can restrict the flow of the oil through this flow control wall now what happens as this flow control wall is provided at the outlet of the actuator 
यू मे कॉल दिस सर्किट ऐज अ मीटर आउट हाइड्रोलिक सर्किट राइट इन शेपिंग मशीन यू कैन ऑल्सो प्रोवाइड द फ्लो कंट्रोल वॉल एट द इनलेट सो मीटर इन कैन ऑल्सो बी यूज एंड मीटर आउट ऑल्सो कैन बी यूज बट वॉट एवर द डायग्राम आई एम शोइंग हियर इट इज नथिंग बट इट इज सिंपली मीटर आउट हाइड्रोलिक सर्किट राइट सो वॉट विल हैपन फर्स्ट वेन द पंप इज स्टार्टेड एंड सपोज दिस इज द फर्स्ट पोजिशन सो फ्रॉम पंप द ऑइल विल गो टू द ए एंड ऑफ द एक्चुएटर सो फ्रॉम हियर द ऑइल विल स्टार्ट कमिंग एज द ऑइल विल स्टार्ट कमिंग हंड्रेड पर्सेंट बिकॉज देर इज नो फ्लो कंट्रोल वॉल हंड्रेड पर्सेंट ऑइल विल स्टार्ट एज द ऑइल विल स्टार्ट कमिंग वॉट एवर द प्रीवियस ऑइल इज स्टोर्ड हियर दैट ऑइल विल ट्राई टू कम फ्रॉम दिस एंड नंबर टू टू द फ्लो कंट्रोल वॉल नाउ वेन दिस ऑइल विल कम द ऑइल थ्रू दिस चेक वॉल कैन नॉट पास सो दिस चेक वॉल इज क्लोज From this direction, the oil will not flow. From where the oil will flow? Oil simply will flow through the this flow control valve. And this flow control valve, I will add just eighty percent, seventy percent, fifty percent opening. So less amount of the oil will come through this flow control valve. As less amount of the oil will come through this flow control valve, the resistance to the flow of oil will be created here. And due to that, as the oil will not flow flowly from this end, the forward motion of the shipping machine will be slower so it will move slowly and the cutting operation will take place right so that i will come now if i change the position this position suppose i change the position when this will move to it will strike to this stopper and the position of the actuator will get changed in this case as these two stoppers are connected and rod ends are connected the position of the actuator ultimately changes when this rod and touch to stopper this and stopper this when this touch to this so it means that it is traveled fully here the position of the uh, direction control valve will change now when this will move forward completely forward so automatically what will happen this will touch to here and the position of this direction control valve will change to this position when this will cut to this position so here the what will happen now all right so pump will be connected here to the end number 1 so from pump the flow will go so oil will can flow from here also and the oil can flow through this what you can say the check valve 100% oil will flow and the oil will go to this so from here the 100% oil will go and from return line what will happen 100% oil will come to this return line and as the 100% oil will come no resistance to the discharge of the oil and no resistance to the inlet of the oil the return stroke of the shipping machine will be faster so this is the hydraulic circuit for the shipping machine understand okay now the last circuit that we have to see which is known as the hydraulic circuit for okay hydraulic circuit for milling machine so you might have seen this is the diagram of um, horizontal milling machine so what is this this is the work table you can see here this is the work table of the milling machine and this work table we have to reciprocate so this work table we have to move in this direction in this direction in this direction in this direction and there is a tool and this part is the work piece so this is very simple hydraulic circuit so you can see here what is the this is reservoir this is the pump is provided here from pump what is this this is the uh what you can see this is the pressure relief valve is provided here so this is pressure relief valve and another there is a booster pump is also provided booster pump is for the pump is provided for giving the more amount of the hydraulic oil so this is the booster pump you may or may not use the booster pump okay so there is a booster pump again for this booster pump also there is a pressure relief valve is there and return line is coming through the filter here in this hydraulic circuit the filter is provided in the return line it can be provided in the return line but whatever the circuit previously we have seen we have always shown the filter in the in line of the pump but here it is given into the discharge line okay that can be done and this is lever operated which type of the 4 by 3 direction control valve and there are the two what you can say the flow control valves are provided so this is one flow control valve this is one flow control valve it means what both the forward as well as the return motion of the actuator is controlled with the flow control valve you can keep forward and reverse motion same 
and you or you can vary the forward and reverse motion so this is the simple uh, hydraulic circuit I, I i think you will understand this circuit very completely what we will find here new uh, you will find new here is the booster pump so don't get confused booster pump is what booster it means it is only used for giving the more amount of the uh, what do you guys say the pressure when uh, the actual cutting operation will take place in that condition this booster pump will be used so this is the hydraulic circuit used for the milling machine now uh, we have finished near about the 12 uh, hydraulic circuit some hydraulic circuit that um, uh, there is a difference uh, in your book you will find that there are the hydraulic circuit some are pressure dependent and some are travel dependent right so pressure dependent and travel dependent means what the hydraulic circuits will get operated on the given pressure range so they will change the position uh, the direction control wall will change the position uh, depending upon the pressure and what happens in case of the travel dependent the there are the stoppers or the limit switches are provided and when the actuator touch to that uh, limit switch the position of the uh, direction control wall will get change so that is the travel dependent and pressure dependent uh, in next lecture i will also uh, explain you that two hydraulic circuit one will be the travel dependent one will be the pressure dependent so likewise we have finished meter in hydraulic circuit meter out hydraulic circuit bleed off hydraulic circuit sequencing hydraulic circuit unloading hydraulic circuit then synchronizing hydraulic circuit regenerative hydraulic circuit counterbalance hydraulic circuit dual pump unloading circuit hydraulic circuit for milling machine hydraulic circuit for shaping machine right so there was one question from yavle adesh yavle so uh, he sent me one uh, picture of uh, what you can say the diagram of sequencing circuit from the book and he show me that there sir there is a rack and pinion is uh, mounted so uh, rack and pinion is the application right so that actuator is used for operating the rack and pinion mechanism so that external attachment you can attach anything to the rod end of the actuator and that will become the application so you forget about that that is the application means that sequencing circuit is used for operating the two rack so that when that uh, actuator will move forward rack will move forward and it will rotate the pinion so for rotating the pinion that rack and pinion arrangement was used and therefore that diagram is there so, right so we have to focus on only the hydraulics part of the hydraulic circuit that another rack and pinion will be called as the application you can attach any one type of the application to that hydraulic circuit okay so hence uh, we are now finishing the hydraulic circuit so after finishing the hydraulic circuit there are some few parts related with the hydraulic circuit which is known as the causes and troubleshooting of the hydraulic circuit now what happens when you will go to the industry right and in industry when you start working on some hydraulic circuit machines will be there which will be get operated on the hydraulic circuit or you will also uh, invent some machines which are based on the hydraulic circuit now in that case uh, there will be some problems in the hydraulic circuit and some problems are very common so how to troubleshoot how to find out or that what is the exact problem happening in the my hydraulic circuit and how i can solve that uh, problem uh, with my hydraulic circuit now here i will i'm showing you the one simple table so which is known as causes and troubleshooting of hydraulic circuit means uh, if there is a fault so first column you can see here the first column will indicate the fault so what type of the fault if this type of the fault is there then what are the probable causes what can be the probable causes and for that probable cause what can be the remedy what you can do solution so that this fault or this problem can be resolved so we will start from the pump suppose uh, there is a hydraulic machine or hydraulic circuit and that hydraulic circuit is working and while working uh, there is a noise is coming from the pump means noisy pump first problem what in hydraulic circuit noisy pump means the abnormal noise is coming from the pump some noise will come but you will by experience you will understand which is normal noise and which is abnormal noise so if some abnormal noise is coming from the pump what can be the probable causes this will be the probable causes so first cause will be uh, hydraulic pump 
may have cavitations and taking air into the system cavitation dal asel means what hydraulic pump is taking air and when the air is entering into the hydraulic pump it will create the noise the first cause so if you find that the air is there what do you have to do remove cavitation it means you have to check the connection you have to check the source from where the air is entering into the pump and you have to remove that air from the pump when, when once you remove the air from the pump what will happen the noise of the pump will get eliminated so first solution second are the noisy pump when the pump will give noise when there is a low fluid level so spelling is there low fluid level means there is a very less fluid is there in the reservoir and therefore the pump is not suctioning the proper amount of the fuel so what is the remedy there fill the fluid make the reservoir full so that there will not be any noise of the pump third too heavy fluid third cause means whatever the pump you are using right if that pump is giving the noise the third probable cause will be you are using too heavy of fluid too heavy means what here i am talking about the viscosity of the oil if the oil is very high viscous then also there is a probability that the pump will give the noise in that case what you have to do you have to use the light fluid means you have to use the correct viscosity oil for that particular pump now when you will see the different type of the pump many pumps are made or are working for a particular hydraulic oil and with that particular uh, viscosity the oil, oil that pump will work normally and if you use very viscous oil or very high viscosity oil then that pump will give the noise that is the uh, third probable cause uh, fourth cause is that cold fluid if it is a cold fluid then also the pump will give the noise what you have to do you have to raise the temperature of the fluid so uh, uh, there is one property of the fluid uh, that is the fluidity so it should flow very easily right the oil should flow very easily and if the you drop the temperature of the oil there will be a problem while flowing of the fluid and therefore you have to raise the temperature fifth cause there is a suction filter clogged if the pump is giving the noise the fifth cause can be the suction filter whatever the filter you have provided that filter get clogged or choked so you have to clean the filter and your problem of the noisy pump will get vanish correct right. now second part if suppose in hydraulic circuit this this was the first part the pump is giving the noise these are the probable causes these are the probable solution the second part that suppose the fluid does not come it means the pump is you started the pump but the fluid is not coming from the pump at the outlet you are not getting any amount of the fluid so what can be the probable causes probable causes are <laughs> fluid level in the reservoir is low if there is no fluid level in the reservoir there is no question of coming the fluid out of the pump because there will be no suction there will be no delivery so add the recommended fluid what is the remedy you have to level the fluid in the reservoir second cause fluid inlet hose or inlet filter is clogged right when the fluid will not come out of the pump same if the hose pipe what are the pipe you are connecting from reservoir to the filter to the pump if that pipe is get choked or clogged or if the filter is get choked or clogged then also the oil will not come so you have to clean the pipe and clean the filter that is the solution third cause air leak in the inlet line prevent priming so if there is a air leakage means air is coming into the pump so uh, that also will cause and the fluid will not come through the pump so repair the leaks what you have to find out the where there are the leaks and you have to repair that leakages uh, fourth cause will be the viscosity of fluid is too high as i already i mentioned if the viscosity of oil will be very high that oil cannot be get sucked by the pump and therefore you will not get the uh, discharge through the pump so what is what is the remedy use a lighter or use the correct viscosity oil recommended for that particular type of the pump that can be the solution fifth cause is pump has dirtiness means what if the pump is 
uh, you have seen uh, so many pumps that there are the positive displacement pump uh, gear pump internal gear pump external gear pump gear rotor pump then we have also seen the screw pump right then we have also seen the uh, what you can say the uh, inline axial piston pump bent axis axial piston pump and these pumps are manufactured very precisely the components are very precise and the alignment of that component is also very precise now what happens if uh, some dirt dust particles are there into the pump so what will happen whatever the bearings are provided there whatever the impellers are provided there that will not rotate properly and as it will not rotate properly what will happen it will not the suction will not take place and as the suction will not take place the discharge will not take place so this is the uh, reason if there is a dirt in the pump the pump will not work properly and the fluid will not come out of the pump so what you have to do here the remedy is to clean the pump clean the pump check the filter clean the filter replace the filter these all are the remedies so this is the second fault in the hydraulic circuit what is the third fault if there is a overheating of fluid what does it means it means that whatever the hydraulic oil you are using the temperature of that hydraulic oil is raising very high it is going very high so what can be the causes probable causes so i will read here contaminants present in relief wall so if the relief wall is not working properly it is not functioning properly if there are some containments are there and it is not opening at a given pressure pressure relief wall is not opening so if that pressure relief wall does not open so what will happen the pressure in the system will increase and as the pressure in the system will increase the temperature of the oil will increase and for that reason what you have to do clean and replace pressure relief wall second thing is that if the viscosity of oil is very low then also there will be the overheating of the fluid so what you have to do use high viscosity oil third cause is that fan is not running sometimes we are providing the fans for cooling of the hydraulic oil so if that fan is not working properly check and repair the fan is the remedy sometimes the fourth cause is dirty oil means uh, you are using the dirty oil and when you will use the dirty oil if there is a no proper filter is provided no proper filtration of the oil is taking place in that case the oil will become dirty so what is the remedy clean the oil if you clean the oil then the overheating of the fluid will not take place low fluid level if there is a less amount of the oil present in the re reservoir then also the overheating of the fluid will take place so what is the remedy fill the correct amount of the fluid in the reservoir excessive pump wear the last reason for overheating of the fluid if the pump is wearing very excessive wear of the pump is taking place in that case the remedy is that you have to replace the pump completely replace the pump then overheating problem will get resolved then fourth fault what the fourth fault will come into the hydraulic system low pressure in the system so you have selected the right amount of the pump right amount of the every component of the hydraulic uh, system you have selected but you are not getting the desired pressure in the system it means that the system is giving you the low pressure so if this happens so what will happen if the low pressure is there then the actuators will not be able to exert the desired amount of the force and pressure and your application will not work properly so that will be the complication of low pressure in the system so what can be the probable causes the first cause is that air in the fluid if there is a air in the fluid then there will be the pressure drop in the system so what you have to remedy fill the tank nearly full or recommended level fill the tank means what fill the reservoir nearly full so you have to keep reservoir almost full or whatever the recommended level is there up to that level you have to fill the hydraulic oil number second cause of low pressure in the system is that pressure relief wall set too low if the setting of the pressure relief wall is at very low pressure so what will happen as the pump will start uh, raising the pressure the at a very low pressure the pressure relief wall will get open and it will discharge the pump oil so what will happen 
further the higher pressure oil will not go into the system so this can be the cause if you set your pressure relief wall at very low pressure limit then it will open at a very early stage and the more pressure will not be developed in the system so what is the remedy reset the pressure relief wall at a correct amount of the pressure setting so uh, you have to set the pressure relief wall Sec third cause of low pressure in the system is that defective or worn out pump or actuator if the pump is worn out or the actuator is worn out so when the pump will be worn out when the actuator will be worn out what will happen the leakage will get started there so from actuator some leakage will take place from pump some leakage will take place and correct amount of the pressure will not get built so if this is the problem then what you have to do repair or replace the pump or the actuator so repair means what you have to find out where the uh, wear out has taken place in the actuator or the pump if that part can be replaced so replace it and get the correct amount of the air tight joint or uh, second remedy is you have to replace the actuator or the pump the fourth cause of low pressure in the system is that pressure relief wall not properly seated if the pressure relief wall is not properly seated seated means what uh, when we studied the pressure relief wall so pressure relief wall are the uh, when the that poppet is there right that poppet if it is not fitted correctly the angle of the wall sheet right so where that poppet is beating that sheet and the that uh, what you can say the poppet if both are not perfectly fitted so what will happen if there is some gap some leakage will take place and that leakage will uh, drop the pressure in the system so what you have to do rectify adjust the pressure relief wall at a particular level last cause of low pressure in the system is leak in the hydraulic line now we are connecting so many parts with the uh, each other by using the hydraulic hose pipes or the hydraulic pipes right so we are connecting uh, reservoir to the filter filter to the pump pump to the pressure relief wall pressure relief wall to the pressure gauge and shuttle wall then this all we are connecting to the direction control wall direction control wall is connected to the uh, flow control wall flow control wall is connected to the actuator so there will be um, very large amount of the piping and bends and uh, accessories will take place if in this all things if there is a some leakage in complete hydraulic line so that leakage will cause the low pressure in the system so what you have to do you have to remedy tighten leaky connection whenever there the connections are leaking you have to make the correction and you have to make that all connections leak proof so that is the remedy for uh, 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 low pressure in the hydraulic system then the fourth fifth cause in hydraulic uh, circuit that will generally we see foaming of fluid or air in the fluid means sometimes the bubbles will get form in the fluid foam will get form in the uh, fluid or some air will get mixed with the fluid if that happens that can be the one uh, problem in the hydraulic circuit so what are the probable causes of that number one probable cause is that air leak in hydraulic pump suction side so air will leaking into the suction side of the hydraulic pump so what you have to do uh, remedy is that tighten leaky connection so whenever there is a leakage is there you have to find out that and you have to remove that leakage make that connection air tight second cause is that fluid level very low so what is the remedy full the uh, full fluid level third cause is that wrong fluid put in the tank wrong fluid means what if the viscosity of the fluid is not correct then your uh, foaming will take place then use the proper fluid the fourth cause is the pump shaft seals or access plate could be drawing air into the system so there can be the leakage in the pump right so uh, what are the shaft and seals are used in uh, the pump so that shaft and seal because shaft is coming out and the shaft is connected to the motor if the seals of that shaft are not perfect then there can be the one source of the leakage uh, in the pump and it will also cause the foaming or air into the pump so what you have to uh, remedy check the leakage at the pump shaft end and if there is some leakage correct that leakage 
the sixth <coughs> problem in the hydraulic circuit or the fault in the hydraulic circuit which is generally observed is that excessive wear of the parts so there are uh, some parts uh, some rotary parts are there some reciprocating parts are there if the excessive wear is taking place then what can be the causes viscosity of fluid is very low viscosity of the fluid is if i use very low viscosity fluid then can be the excessive wear of the parts uh, what is the remedy use appropriate recommended fluid second uh, cause of the excessive wear is high pressure occurs above the maximum pump rating so high pressure is there then it will cause excessive wear check the uh, relief valve then third is misalignment in the drive or belt drive in tight misalignment if there is in drive uh, check the parts and rectify the problem air circulation is causing a chatter in the system if the air is circulating remove the air from the system abrasive matter in the hydraulic oil is being circulated if some hydraulic uh, metal particles or abra abrasive particle is uh, mix with the hydraulic circuit it will go to the every part and it will cause the wear so you have to put the proper filter so that no abrasive particle will get mixed with the oil and the last what you can say the last fault in the hydraulic system is that control valve sticky or working hard so whatever the control valves are there direction control valve flow control valve then pressure relief valve if these valves are not working properly they are going somewhat tight it is not moving uh, or it is not position changing their position very smoothly they become very sticky so are working very hard so this can be the common problem in the hydraulic circuit what ca what are the causes misalignment in the control valve and second is the valve is broken so these are the two causes so what are the remedies if there is a misalignment you have to make the correct alignment and if the wall is broken so you have to repair it, the wall or you, you have to replace the wall so these are the common causes and hey now here you uh, i have shown you one what we have said the chart of causes and troubleshooting of hydraulic circuit so they have taken one part here so this part is their pump and they have taken the pump if there is a problem in the pump so this can be the logical approach uh, it is not it may not be readable to you but this can be the logical uh, approach by asking question yes no yes no oh, yes no we come to the final conclusion yes this is the fault and then we solve that problem so this way logically you have to move forward for finding the fault in the hydraulic system and for making the correction or remedy in the hydraulic system so boys in this way we finish the chapter which is known as the hydraulic circuits and troubleshooting of the hydraulic circuit uh, so this is the lecture now i am going to post today uh, you have to watch this lecture completely uh, it will be near about the 50 minutes lecture so you have to watch it com completely if you, you have any difficulty you can uh, message me on the whatsapp or you can directly call me so as i am at home so at any time you can call me and you can ask your difficulties but the condition is that you have to watch the lecture from start to end in one complete setting and after watching the lecture you have to give your attendance on the youtube as well as on the uh, my personal whatsapp number so that attendance uh, is going to be count understand another one thing i want to discuss with you that whatever the experiments i have shared with you you have to write down that all experiments in your general book so you have to pick the general papers and on that papers you have to write down all the experiments understand when uh, the time will come uh, in a short period of time we will conduct that all experiments in the lab understand so that are the two instructions watch the lecture completely from start to end in one setting number two after watching uh, give your attendance on the youtube as well as on the uh, what you can say the uh, my personal whatsapp number and number third uh, whatever the youtube channel i have created umesh urade so you have to press the like button and subscribe button that bell button i don't know what that bell button is there but uh, it says that when you press the bell button when i will upload the video you will get the notification so subscribe 
you that channel whatever the channel i am subscribe like and what you the next is the bell icon you have to press the bell icon because i will get the information and another one thing that when i check the analytics of the video i found that the video whatever you are watching is not watch beyond 10 to 15 minutes means there are the students near about for this uh, hydraulics lecture fourth uh, near about 140 students view that lecture but the average view time is only seven minutes means every student has seen only for seven minutes this is not good boys because we are working from home you have to listen that lecture very carefully very completely then and then only you will get the clear-cut idea about the uh, topics that i am teaching to you online and number second if you have any difficulty you can call me at any time you can call me or you can send me the whatsapp i hope everybody is having my number okay good night